This is a brief review of different ways for measuring angles and their relationships. So there are two popular ways of measuring angles, degrees and radians. Uh, degrees tend to be a little bit simpler for beginners to understand, so they're often introduced earlier on, like in middle school. But radians are usually easier to use in more advanced calculations. For example, in calculus, almost all of the formulas we learn are much simpler when f the functions like sine and cosine are expressed in terms of radians. So um, we're going to learn how to go back and forth between these two types of measurements. So remember that when we're looking at degrees, we think of there as being 360 degrees in a circle, so 360 degrees in a complete rotation. If you turn around in place and stop facing the same direction you started, we'd say you turned around 360 degrees. Or we could say that that's 2 pi radians. So remember, pi is this number that's approximately 3.14159, but that's not exactly the value uh, because this decimal approximation, if we express pi as a decimal, these numbers will go on forever and they don't follow uh, any repeating pattern. So we're not going to replace pi with a decimal approximation in this video. We're just going to work with the value pi, writing it with that symbol. That will make things a lot easier for us too. Okay, so first of all, remembering that uh, there are 360 degrees in a complete rotation, that means if you have an angle of d degrees, that's if that's not 360, if it's say less than 360, then that only represents part of a complete rotation. So for example, let's say that you are looking at a rotation of 180 degrees and you plug that into this fraction. 180 over 360, that simplifies to one half. So 180 degrees would be half of a complete rotation. Similarly, uh, if there are two pi radians in a complete rotation and we have r radians, let's say we plug in pi for r. So imagine we've turned around pi radians. If I plug that into this expression, pi over 2 pi, that also simplifies to one half. And so this is telling us that pi radians and 180 degrees both represent the same thing. They both represent half of a complete rotation. So we can always come up with a relationship between degrees and radians this way using this formula because uh, d over 360 and r over 2 pi would represent the same fraction of a rotation if d degrees and r radians represent the same angle. So one thing you could do is rearrange this equation like we have below here in order to come up with these formulas. If I know the radian measure, I can plug that in to this expression to get the degree measure. Or if I know the degree measure, I can plug it into this expression to get the radian measure. And that's just summarized on this page. Now you can memorize these formulas or you can memorize the fact that there are, uh, if you have d degrees, then d over 360 is the fraction of a rotation. R radians r over 2 pi is a fraction of a rotation and if these represent the same angle then these quantities have to be equal. Instead of memorizing these two things you can always come up with these things by starting with this relationship and solving for the variable you want in terms of the one you have. So we'll do two examples. I'll do one of them using one of the formulas. So uh, here I have a radian measure r is 2 pi over 3 and I want to find the degree measure. 
And from the previous slide, let's go back there, d is 180 over pi times r. Now instead of r, I'm going to plug in the known measurement to pi over 3 radians. And then what I wanted to is simplify this. Now uh, I'm multiplying two fractions together. So I can just think of this as, well, first I can simplify a little bit. Pi in the numerator and pi in the denominator will cancel. Uh, I can do the multiplication in the numerator now, but actually I could simplify a little bit more to get my numbers smaller. So right now I'm looking at 180 times 2 over 3 in the denominator, but 180 and 3 have a common factor of 3. 180 is 60 times 3, so that means I can cancel those as well. And this leaves me with 60 times 2 is 120 degrees. So, a measurement of 2 pi over 3 radians corresponds to the same angle as 120 degrees. All right, let's look at another. Uh, find the radian measure of an angle whose degree measure is 135. So I have 135 degrees. And I want to find the radian measure that corresponds to the same angle. So I could go back and look at one of those formulas. But this time I'm going to pretend I've forgotten the formulas and come up with the one I need. So I know that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So d over 360 is a fraction of a circle of a complete rotation. I know there are 2 pi radians in a complete rotation. So r over 2 pi is a fraction of a rotation. And so if d and r represent the same angle, these fractions should be equal. And now I can isolate the one I want. I know d and I'm trying to find r. So to get r by itself, I'll multiply both sides of this equation by 2 pi. So I have d over 360 times 2 pi. And that's the formula I'll use to compute the radian measure r. So let's plug things in now. Uh, D is 135. And let's see if we can simplify this some more. Um, all right, one thing we can do is uh, simplify the 2 in the numerator with the 360 in the denominator. That gives me 135 over 180 times pi. And then 135 and 180 are actually both multiples of 15. 135 is 9 times 15. Uh, 180 is 12 times 15. So if I cancel these, 9 twelfths, that simplifies to 3 fourths. So we've figured out that 135 degrees is equivalent to 3 fourths pi radians.